this is very much a Sophia film. The, aesthetically, it's so beautiful, this film. And between Sophia and between Philippe, who's the cinematographer, I mean, I've seen some of the still shots of the film. And it is, without a doubt, after 15 years of making films, it's the most beautiful, to my eye, it's the most, and I've only seen still shots, as I said, but the most beautiful frames and the most aesthetically rich film that I think I've been part of. Which she's kind of seamless. You don't really see, you don't really get a sense of her doing the work, and she does. I mean, she wrote every word of this, and she visualized, pre-visualized every frame. And, and then when Philippe came on board, I'm sure they worked beautifully in tandem. They had worked together. I think he shot her opera in, in Italy, and so they have a, a shared creative history. But yeah, she, you don't really, you know, I've worked with some directors, and there's no way that's really right or wrong. And that's the beautiful thing about what we do or you do and anything creative, you know, it defies any quotidian measure of right or wrong and and but it, her way kind of feels maybe more right than some I mean there's an immense lack of tension on the script on the set it's just a really peaceful playful environment it's focused when it needs to be for sure and and you know when the darker themes in the third act as I said are being explored I mean the set changes timber a little bit the tone changes but um but it's just a really relaxed environment she's incredibly easygoing and, uh, and just generous to her core, it seems. And I read into the book and it was very, it was very much a fabric of the whole story that for whatever reason, Thomas Cullinan, Cullinan decided that this character was Irish, that he was an immigrant. And I thought that's kind of more interesting to me than any notion of the tension in the house being born of anything to do with North and South. Yes, initially he's a Yankee soldier, so the girls feel threatened by that. And, but those differences, as profound as they are, and profound enough to have birthed that war and kept that war alive for as long as it was fought. In this house, I think some people, when you take them out of battle, are if they didn't have the community context to know what side they're fighting on, are just men or just women. And so I think the greatest danger from McBurney could come from something that was nothing to do with North and South, was nothing to do with geography, politics, war. It was just that he was a man, that he was a man. And, you know, we spoke then, myself and Sophia, about the backstory and the fact that he came from, from something of some level of poverty in, in Dublin and, and arrived with nothing to America and kind of might have had a chip on his shoulder for those that had a lot in life. And then all that stuff and had never been around people who were as hoi polloi, you know, and as well healed as these women that he certainly suddenly finds himself around. And in this house, this mansion, this plantation home that he suddenly finds himself in. So there was a load of stuff that we felt would be better to draw on by having him as, as Irish. But I'm just surrounded by extraordinary talent. And a lot of the film, I'm lying in my bed watching them work. So I kind of have the best seat in the house, like box seats, you know, I have this bed and someone just slipped me a bag of popcorn. I'm just watching these extraordinary women and, you know, younger women and, and not as younger women, I was going to say older, terrible, not as younger women do extraordinary work. And, um, and there's just been a joy to be around and there's an amazing sense of camaraderie. And yeah, it's, it's been, Everyone is so present and so on point, and you know I'm sure you've heard Nicole being Miss Martha is kind of the matriarch of the of the set slash crew, and she's kind of knocking everyone into shape when they need to be knocked into shape, which they don't need to be, but she does. You know she's the um, iron fist and a velvet love very much, um, and yeah, it's been a joy. I've seen so many films set in this period and, you know, so many years of cinema where you've observed the social etiquettes of this period and you've observed the interactions between men and women and you always wonder, are those interactions and those behaviours, are they really a, a, an accurate portrayal of, well, there's always somebody that steps out of the socially acceptable box and circle of behaviour, were they accurate portrayals of what it was for a man and a woman to interact or for an adult to treat a child and vice versa. 
or was it just shown through the the visor of of you know artistic interpretation and misperception of the way things were once upon a time so i don't know my point being though you put on this costume and you stand in these beautiful rooms and you see the the violin in the corner and 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 you see these women in their gorgeous petticoats and it instantly does something to you and i'm not sure whether that's just on a visceral level, it's that as well, because the aesthetic is so strong and it's so kind of romantic looking. But I think it's also from years of watching, watching these films. I think McBurney's, he's, 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 I think he's a good, I think he's a good judge of people. I think he's somebody who's had to, to a certain degree, live by his wits, to a great degree, live by his wits. Um, and those who, you know, in times gone by, certainly, and today, of course, where society permits it, uh, you have to talk to someone who's kind of like a grifter, but they have a manipulative aspect to them that demands or is born of the ability to read what a person needs, to read what their soft spot is, to read what they may find disdainful, to stay away from what they find disdainful and to go towards what a soft spot might be with whatever the person needs, whether it's affection or a kind word or to be more reserved with Miss Martha or, so, you know, he would, I hope it's not too extreme and therefore ridiculous, but he would certainly modify his behaviors depending on, I think the most honest relationship he has in the whole thing is probably with the girl that finds him, with. Una's character, Amy, Miss Amy, you know? I think that's kind of for where the relationship started out, her finding him by the tree and being the one that committed this act of generosity going against what she knew Miss Martha would say was okay or wasn't okay. Um, but also just the sweetness of her and the innocence of her is, is something that even by the end of the film, I feel has, has been lost, but certainly up until that point, she is, I have a scene where I say to her, you know, don't tell anyone else, but. I consider you my best friend in this whole place. And she says, do you really? And I say, yeah. And, uh, and I think that he was sincere, you know, and he's not always sincere, McBurney, in, in what he's saying, and I think he was sincere in that moment. The themes in the film, you know, the, as I was saying earlier, themes of, of oppression and themes of sexuality and themes of loneliness and isolation and, and the violence of the human heart and suspicion and all those themes are so timeless that hopefully it won't feel weighted down by the period element, you know? Um, so if the audience can be engaged with it and if they can, yeah, if they can be connected to the behaviors and the interactions that they're watching on screen, thereby the drama unfold, that's, that's plenty.